down. Yeah. Did you see what they were? They were cursing at each other, screaming, yes, yelling. They were. Patrick Wall, I love Gabby, but he'd go down and go down hard in that fight, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, we should talk about that. All right, thank you, Matt. You're welcome. That's good. Howard Feynman, when we come back, we'll talk all about the shutdown and how it affects you. I'm Tony Kornheiser. Try to see it my way. Do I have to keep on talking to This is We Can Work It Out by the Beatles. That's why we have Howard Feynman of the Huffington Post here to tell us how we can work out the government shutdown. Charlie Burks in Springfield, Virginia. Top five reasons for Congress's struggle to agree on a new budget. One, sons of bitches, throw the self-serving, apple-slicing, jazz-loving weasels out. That's it. That's the list. If you watch TV at all last night or today, you saw some Republican congressman down on the mall screaming at some young woman for closing a memorial, doing exactly what she was told to do. And then other people screaming at this guy. Uh, I mean, I just, I'd like to start, I'd like to start with the notion of where are we now. But even before that, I, I just, how tone deaf are these people that they don't, they just don't get it that everybody hates them? What, what is this? Uh, well, they are tone deaf, and they, they, the paradox is they claim to speak for the people and their constituents, but once they get here and start playing the, uh, the spin game, which is all they do here, they completely lose sight of any larger picture in the world. That's, that's, and, and, and they are able to convince themselves that they're doing the Lord's work uh, on behalf of their constituents when they're really just sort of playing games up here in the, the thing at the World War II Memorial is a classic example where, where you had Republican conservatives who were all eager to shut down the government, basically, now running over to the memorial saying, uh, how dare they shut down the government? How dare, <laughs> how dare they keep the World War II veterans out of their memorial? Uh, that's outrageous. Uh, let's let them in. Well, they just got done voting to, to shut down the government. They know exactly what's going to be closed. When they live in Washington, D.C., yeah. it's on every newscast everywhere. They right. know that these memorials are going to be closed. Yeah, but the, the bigger the bigger thing picture on the government shutdown right now is the, quote, partial government shutdown. And it is partial, but it, it does it does affect people. And it's not just the traffic patterns or the parks around here. Uh, there are programs, and naturally the people who get hurt the worst in this kind of situation, are the poorest, most vulnerable people who don't have the lobbyists and don't have the clout and don't get the attention. So, you know, women uh, who are pregnant who get get extra money to, to buy uh, healthful foods for their uh, to eat while they're pregnant or for their infant children, they that funding is going to get cut if this continues another week or so. They're they're out of luck. And, uh, and that's, that's the way it goes. And that's one example of how the people here don't really, uh, they seem to lose sight of what their purpose is the moment they get here. There was, uh, there was a confrontation. I don't want to just dwell on Republican confrontations. There's a confrontation between CNN's Dana Bash yes. and Harry Reid yesterday in which she pointed out that the Republicans are passing a bill which would at least allow cancer victims children with cancer to get treatment why don't you pass that bill and he just said you know that that's a, a charlatan issue it's a sham that's you know that's not and and on and on and she just said well why don't you just pass the bill and embarrassed harry reed yes. enormously my position yes. on that would be why don't you just write a bill that's specifically tied to nothing else allows cancer patients to get care Yes, well, of course, Harry. Of course, everybody cares about the World War II monument and, and honoring the World War II veterans, and everybody cares about cancer patients. Harry Reid's point was in the gamesmanship of this: is if you pass a partial shutdown and then start sort of Swiss cheesing it That's by right. by picking various popular programs to refund or to reopen, then then the other side will have won. And and that's what this is all about. The whole mentality of what this about thing. our side? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The whole mentality of it is it's it's shirts and skins here in D.C. and everybody forgets about the country as a whole. And if you look at any polls, uh, the 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 public's view of Washington in general, uh, of the federal government, of the Congress, of the presidency, of the president, uh, are all really low. Congress especially is is. The, the the numbers are 
beyond comical. It's it's kind of dangerous when only like nine percent of the American public has a positive view of Congress. It's fun to make fun of politicians, but at some point it becomes corrosive when nobody has any regard for these people at all. Where where are we now? Where are we now on this? Because I think your position is that this shutdown isn't the big one. That the big one is going to be funding the debt. Yeah, I think it's all be, it's all going to be rolled into one thing. What's what what the, what happens on October seventeenth, according to the Treasury, is that the United States runs out of. Uh, uh, legal authority to borrow more money uh, to pay for programs and policies that have already been enacted by the Congress. And, and, and under law, which goes back in some cases to the 19th century, even though Congress votes to spend the money, another vote is required by Congress to authorize the borrowing of the money to pay for what they already decided to spend. Right. And and that's the vote that's coming up on the 17th. That's called raising the debt ceiling. It's it's always been tempting for politicians in recent decades to use the debt ceiling as a way to stiff arm somebody into getting something done. But it's usually been over a smaller matter. Sometimes back in the 70s, they, they, when, when abortion first became an issue, uh, the strong right to lifers used it, threatened to do something on the debt ceiling to to get victories on abortion. Uh, but it, it's never been used in the way that the Re- Tea Party Republicans ha- are now aiming to use it. And and they they when they ran for office in 2010, when they got elected, when they got here, they all said, "Let's use this debt ceiling vote uh, to get what we want." in big terms, in terms of reductions in spending and changes in programs, and we want our conservative philosophy enshrined by using this. The problem is, is if you threaten to to uh, hold up that vote, uh, the Treasury uh, is denied the legal ability to borrow more money, and uh, and in a sense we go into default as a country. We, we can't pay our bills. We're not going to be able to pay Social Security checks. We're not going to be able to do the other functions of government if the Treasury can't keep borrowing money. Now, the conservatives, the Tea Party people say, well, that's the whole point. We've got to stop borrowing money. We can't keep borrowing money from China and everywhere and from our own children and so on. The government's too big, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the perfect place to make this point, Uh, except that when you do it, you are risking worldwide economic problems because the full faith and credit of the United States, the ability of the United States and to pay its bills, the fact that it's always paid its bills, uh, the fact that we are the reserve currency in the world, is crucial to the operation of uh, the world economy. And that's, you know, so that's that's but, where we are. But what about the fact that we actually can't pay our bills? I mean, we... we you know, I mean, I don't mean to go like full go, tea party, but go go but, full tea party. Well, I mean, you, you guys know what a mathematician I am, and last I checked, I mean, you can't borrow your way out of debt. So, is there not something? Isn't there something sort of? I mean, not noble, but responsible. Haven't they sort of marginalized what is a very responsible position? Well, I mean, was, I, shouldn't I, we I, limit? I mean, if 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 the Feynman household made seven bucks a week and spent ten. You can't just, I mean, you can't do that in perpetuity. We wouldn't be able to afford our window nation windows. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that wash you education. Wash you education.